everyone, happy Valentine's Day. It's the special red edition of the Bison video vlog with Jeff Kolpak. Oh, thank happy you. Happy Valentine's Day, my friend. <laughs> I'm Thomas. I didn't get you anything. I feel a little sheepish now. Uh, well, you know, um, there's always the rest of the day. Maybe, uh, maybe buy me dinner. Uh, okay, well, All there right. you go. I might owe you a bet or two, something on that. <laughs> Well, uh, here we are. We're getting ready for a big matchup tomorrow night. Rare on a Wednesday night. That's due to the bracket buster situation for the Bison men. They get to go to Brookings, South Dakota to play the Jacks, which should be a fantastic game. The first matchup in Fargo went overtime. We saw the Bison trail majority of the game, only to force overtime, trying to extend that great winning streak. Nate Walters was 9 of 28 in that game, Jeff. He had a, a great game, not shooting-wise, but... He made his other teammates better, and he's done that all season long for the Jacks. I'm not in the camp that this is a must-win situation because I don't think it is. Everything boils down, of course, to the Summer League tournament yep. in, in two, three weeks. But if, uh, make it a competitive game if you're NDSU. Try to show that you can stop Nate Walters late in the game uh, somehow and, and show that you're up to the task of being one of those top two or three teams with Oral Roberts, uh, South Dakota State, and NDSU. I think that's probably the main goal. Is it a must win? Not really. It's still, they have won five straight years in Brookings. I mean, you think of that, the Jacks with this class, that they think they can do something special in Sioux Falls in March. They've never beaten the Bison at home. That's and, remarkable to think of. And talking to a couple of the player, Bison players yesterday, they actually enjoy playing in that kind of atmosphere because you don't get that very often no. in the Summit League with uh, some of these teams that will draw just a few hundred people. Of course, Brookings <laughs> is different, yeah. as we all all know and uh, I know one of the Bison players said you know it, it's almost a refreshing and it, it's enjoyable and we take it as a challenge to play in an atmosphere Frost, like Are that. Frost Arena is one of the best around and it should be electric tomorrow night for that game as I mentioned that means the uh, normal Saturday game which is reserved for a Summit League everybody in the Summit will play in a bracket buster South Dakota State gets a national TV game with Buffalo Oral Roberts plays Akron. The Bison are facing Western Michigan. This is a big week. Granted, NDSU's RPI is now fourth in the Summit League. That loss to UMKC mm -hmm. just killed them in that in that respect. But a matchup with a MAC school can go a long way if they get a win uh, down the line here. Just, I guess, national respect-wise for a Summit team to beat a MAC school. Well, the football team's done pretty well against <laughs> yeah, the MAC with a couple true. of wins. Of course, that's a little different in, in, in scholarship ratios. But... Uh, it's going to be fun just to get another team. Western yep. Michigan, what are they all about? What's the level of play of the MAC all about? I've never seen a MAC team play basketball in person. So uh, to see something like that, and it's new and it's refreshing, it's too bad it's not a new BSA, really. That's true. That would really put the whole package <laughs> together. Let's, uh, you mentioned football, and mm -hmm. uh, it's always 24-7, 365 days a year here in Fargo. Some interesting movings and shakings that happened over the past couple days. Scott Hazelton, the architect of that great Bison defense as the defensive coordinator, now gone to USC to be the new linebackers coach. Craig Bull almost instantaneously promotes Chris Kleiman from defensive backs to the defensive coordinator. Your thoughts on the whole uh, story that has developed over the last couple days. When you see the connections, I think, with Hazleton and uh, connections with USC, with the Tampa 2, with Gus Bradley, yeah. with uh, Todd Wash, with Monty Kiffin, it all makes sense. Now, uh, how, it couldn't have fit better either for NDSU with Kleiman there. Here's an experienced coordinator who's been at Northern Iowa nine years. He's been at NDSU one. Knows the league very well, up and down. Was in on all the game planning yeah. and the playoffs. I mean, it wasn't Scotty Hazelden by himself by any means. It was, it was a collaborative effort, and at least that's what the coaches told me. So, uh, you know, you know, Chris Kleiman knows what he's doing. And it came after signing day, too, yeah. which is really, uh, I don't think you can underestimate that. Now, Chris Kleiman said on my radio show last night, the next big thing for the coaching staff is to find a new linebackers coach, which is also what uh, Scott Hazelden doubled as defensive coordinator slash linebackers coach, which obviously I believe Craig Bowl wants done before March 24th, which is the start of uh, spring football. I'd be surprised if he went... Uh, uh, back to his old blueprint of finding a coach that maybe was fired at a big university. Mm. I think he's, this is the new Craig Ball blueprint to get a Nick Gazer from Duluth, to get uh, uh, Scotty Hazelton, who was a GA here at one time. Ken and Burns from Southern Illinois. Exactly. Yeah. I think uh, I think he's found the formula that works in the coaching staff. I think it's made for a better camaraderie no too doubt. in the coaching staff. The question I have, and this is, and I asked Chris Kleiman this yesterday. Talk about big shoes to fill. The Bison defense allowed 27 points in four playoff games. How, how do you, you can't improve that, can you? I well, mean, you how, where do you go from there? You have to forget about it. I mean, you have to forget about it. It starts this winter with winter workouts mm -hmm. and this spring and spring football. I think you just say, okay, this uh, season was great. It was fun. It was it was uh, memorable, but it's over. And uh, this is a new season. We're not going to probably give up 27 points in four playoff games again. <laughs> probably will not happen but uh, you still have to put together the pieces to contend. 
Lucky your football ma- mindset there. Last year is last year. You sounded like a football coach. I should be there. a coach. Huh? I should be a linebacker's you're, coach. Well, there, there you go. You've already asked for Craig Bull to come on the blog, and now you're petitioning for a new job. Is that I, what you're telling me? I, I think the goal of this blog is to get Craig Bull on a media <laughs> block. Come on, Craig. I think it's going to happen. It's, gonna I, happen. I have a sense it's Valentine's I have... Day. Feel the love. <laughs> I will say this. We're talking with Chris Kleiman. They're losing four big guys, senior uh, leadership guys from Chad Wilson, Preston Evans, John Pike, Coulter Boyer. Those are going to be really hard guys. Granted, they have a ton of talent coming back, but that experience that they're losing is going to be tough to replace on the defense. And I'll add Scott Solchinski to yep. that mix as a leader. And, uh, and I think we, we've touched on it for quite some time now that you don't get that far without senior leaders. No. And, and it was a young team, but it was a young team with some very effective older leaders. We sparked uh, quite the debate both in the forum and your column last week about uh, who, who, who called the Bison after winning the national championship. As we tape this here on Valentine's Day, the Bison have 10 games already signed, sealed, and delivered. They want to play 11. They want to play six home games. And that is where the real dilemma lays because when you win a national championship, it's going to raise the attention, obviously, of the program. And for the big boys, Oklahoma is called. Florida State has called. Pittsburgh, uh, Michigan State have all inquired about playing uh, the Bison. That obviously would be a row game for NDSU. Mm-hmm. would be a second FBS opponent. I'm in the camp. You don't do it. No, I, I, Unless you get an outrageous amount of money to go and play that game, I think you stay away from it. It's Valentine's Day. I'm also in your camp. <laughs> I agree with that. I may have not agreed yesterday, but I agree today. No, <laughs> no I don't agree. I've never agreed with that. And, and I'm interested to see how Northern Iowa runs. It's yeah. Wisconsin, Iowa, Youngstown gamut. I just think that's too much. It's not worth it. It's all about the playoffs in the FCS. Correct. And it's not about really getting the big paycheck if you can uh, if you can all help it. And I don't think NDSU needs that paycheck. And I think uh, another FCS, a uh, Tennessee Tech or an Idaho State, a Northern Colorado, something like that would be perfect. You know, there plenty of our comments we got on that blog post were saying, well, NDSU's ready. Go up and let's see how they would do against, they're not against ready. that. No, they're not. They're not ready to go out to Colorado State and then come back and then go out to uh, Oklahoma or Florida Norman, State. Yeah, no FCS Norman, team yeah. is ready. That's ridiculous. That would be running the that's running the gamut to the fullest extent. Oh, is I being negative on Valentine's Day? I'm sorry. <laughs> I think you're being realistic, I mean, which for some guys on Valentine's Day is always good. I meant if any good. team could do it, this team could do it, but <laughs> this might not be the year. Do you imagine this any time down the line? And let's just let's go three or four years down the line to say, you know, Gene Taylor gets a call from a Florida State, a Michigan State, say, hey, you know what? Here's eight hundred thousand dollars. You want to play us? Why well, switch from your philosophy that won you a national title? Absolutely not. That's an interesting point. I, I'm curious to see where it goes. I think what we've heard from Craig Bull and Gene Taylor, they want the six home games. That's that uh, after having nine this past season with the three uh, FCS playoff games. I, I think the six is is almost mandated. They would do five if if they have a sixth row game being an FCS opponent. That's probably the last uh, strategy there. If you're a Bison fan, would you rather party in the parking lot in, <laughs> in September or watch a game on TV? That's a good question. I think uh, I think I'm right. Now we'll see. Here's the thing, though. A lot of fans would be Don't divided point on that. I'm just I'm just saying for the comments we got on that last blog, I think a lot of people are divided. Say, well, sure, we would love another game mm-hmm. to tailgate. But they would like to be on ESPN to see the Bison play against a Florida State or an Oklahoma. I'm not arguing with you. I'm just saying that that, that's what the mindset is. I think think that's a national title, unrealistic thought. Uh, You know, all of a sudden we're – uh, we are um, uh, you know, unbeatable. They That's think, not true. There's they, just no way. I think some fans look at that Georgia Southern Alabama game and see what Georgia Southern. Granted, they lost by 28 points to Alabama, but kept it close for for a majority of the game before Alabama pulled away. They say, well, NDSU slammed Georgia Southern. Why not try that? That's the national champs. I go back. Why well, deviate <laughs> from your philosophy that won you a national title? Stupid. 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 Lots to figure out between who the buys will play. There's still plenty of FCS teams that have that date available. Some of them in the Pioneer League, which is a non-scholarship league. The Patriot League, before we go, mm-hmm. uh, added scholarships. That's a team that uh, uh, league the Bison have played recently, obviously with Lafayette and then Lehigh most recently in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Your thoughts on them uh, adding football scholarships? Well, now? here's the deal. It was a need-based uh, league for scholarships. That means, and some people say, do you need a scholarship? Sure. That's the popular <laughs> theory. I don't think it's going to change that caliber a whole lot, maybe a little much. But a little, little more. But uh, you know, they always they had some money to play with. It's not like everybody was paying a full ride. That Lehigh team made the FCS quarterfinals two straight years. Mm-hmm. Though went to Northern Iowa and won, and, and obviously beat Towson last year before falling at North Dakota State. Big week in Bison hoops. Both the Bison men and women hooking up with South Dakota State. Then the bracket buster game were the NDSU men on Saturday. We're back next week to recap it. Your Rose, sir, are you going to go select uh, someone there? I think I'll <laughs> give this to my wife. I already stole it once. So. <laughs> For Jeff Goldback, I'm Tom Izzo, the latest edition of the Bison video blog.